Now, as we do every week, it's time to speak to the author of international bestsellers, groundbreaking works, including The War on the West, The Strange Death of Europe and The Madness of Crowds. Douglas Murray, let's start in your homeland. We've seen mass marches of more than 100,000 in support of the Palestinian cause in London. But there is a disturbing development. Pro-Palestinian, or should that be anti-Israeli demonstrators, intend to hold a million-man march on November 11. Douglas, that's Remembrance Day. Yes, that's right, Rita. Um, it, it's Remembrance Day in the United Kingdom where we remember the dead of the two world wars and commemorate their sacrifice, including, of course, the sacrifice of soldiers from the Commonwealth and around the world in defeating Nazism and Nazi fascism. And uh, in my view, this is a deliberate provocation of the British people, uh, and it should not be allowed to go ahead. Or, and let me put it this way, mm. um, either it goes ahead, um, uh, either it doesn't go ahead, or it goes ahead, and it will have to be countered. Uh, because I don't think the British public should have to put up with this. Uh, we should not have to put up with our national monuments being defiled. We should not have to put up with the cenotaph being defiled. We should not have to put up with people marching through our streets, calling for the new Nazism, the latest iteration of Nazism, flying their new Nazi flags, rejoicing in the latest murder of Jews. We shouldn't put up with it. And my suspicion, and I think this is already welling up, is that the British public are going to start thinking about showing up and seeing off the people who would defile our monuments. I think it's going to be a great mistake, a great overreach uh, by the Islamists, by the Hamasniks uh, and their fellow traveller fools. An enormous mistake, an enormous overreach of historic proportions. Well, one MP, Henry Smith, has urged the government to deploy the military to ensure there is no disruption to Remembrance Day. We will keep a close eye on that story. Now, as uh, I mentioned earlier in the program, that we are seeing an enormous surge in anti-Semitism, but at the same time, we have politicians, activists and large segments of the media banging on endlessly about Islamophobia. Uh, London Mayor Sadiq Khan, we've got Kamala Harris, what do you make of this focus on Islamophobia, Douglas, as Jews in the West feel compelled to hide signs of their Jewishness at a time where they're facing enormous increase in anti-Semitism? Yes, well, Sadiq Khan, of course, says it for sectional uh, um, reasons, for uh, identity reasons. Um, it's very revealing during this whole period that despite the enormous... Um, plurality, the multiculturalism, the pluralism of, of political leaders in the UK. It's the uh, uh, Muslim uh, political leaders in the UK who have been most filled with hate against Israel and most willing to talk about making peace and much more. I'm thinking of people like First Minister of Scotland, Hamza Youssef, who's married to a Palestinian activist. And, uh, and, of course, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. They, they can never drop this. They never give a damn about their so-called fellow Muslims being massacred by the hundreds of thousands in Syria, Yemen, or anywhere else. They just get really het up for religious reasons whenever any Muslim is involved in a war with the Jews. And that's for very ancient reasons. Ancient reasons, I'm very sorry, we've now imported mm. into politics in the country. Um, but, yes, they always come back to Islamophobia first. Um, I don't like this word. I don't. I think that it's it's a stupid word. It's always been used to try to intimidate people. It will intimidate people no longer. Um, but yes, it is used as a word to try to intimidate people to sort of imply that there's some unbelievable bigotry uh, that lies behind um, uh, dislike of certain things that followers of Islam do. I don't think it is an irrational bigotry. I don't think it is at all. To the extent that such a thing as Islamophobia exists, it is created by the behavior of Muslims. It is created by the behavior of Hamas. Uh, just yesterday, I watched the unvarnished footage of October the 7th, the Hamas massacres. And mm. everybody, all the time as they're massacring the Jews, 
in on it, just under a month ago um, is shouting Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. They are so high on their religious bigotry uh, that they are saying this as they're decapitating young men and much more. Um, now, I don't want to hear about Islamophobia. Uh, it, to the extent it exists, it's created by people like Hamas because we don't like them and we don't want them. We don't want to be near them. And we expect most Muslims, if they wish to live in our societies, to not want or like those people either. But instead of the, the rightful ongoing condemnations, people like Sadiq Khan will go, bang, bang, just one a quick, quick condemnation. You shouldn't cut people's heads off. And then it's on to Islamophobia. Uh, we see these people now. Mm. We see them in flames. We're being gamed. Well, absolutely. There are so many useful idiots in the West for the Islamists. Uh, someone who fled a country that went from being relatively modern to, to an Islamist uh, hell hole. Uh, I, I can completely identify with what you're saying. But of course, we do uh, differentiate between peaceful Muslims who, who are not in any way extremists and those who are marching and uh, chanting for genocide. But, but now, but we are seeing... Make more voluble. They do have to be much more voluble, because if they're going to say that there has to be a ceasefire in the Middle East, for instance, uh, they, 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 they have to acknowledge that there was a ceasefire in the Middle East, and it was broken by Hamas on the 7th of October. And so, and when, when, when moderate Muslims, as we always call them, in, in the West, um, start shrieking about Israel, uh, I'm sorry that, you know, then you have to say, are these people remotely moderate? Um, uh, we have lots mm. of good moderate Muslims, for sure. But they need to start speaking up now and speaking up in defense of civilian populations being massacred by Hamas. It's Hamas that broke the ceasefire. Absolutely. And you know what? I think they are let down by their community leaders. And uh, and at these marches, uh, where are the chants against Hamas? Where are the chants to free the Palestinians from this murderous death cult? That would actually, I think, uh, encourage a lot more support for their cause. But it seems to just all the hate and ire is focused on Israel. Now, we talked previously about the left's march through the institutions. It started with universities and we are seeing some of those devastating results. Let's look at this footage from Harvard of a lone Jewish student, a small man here, you'll see him, being bullied and abused by just a hateful mob. Have a look. <laughs> Douglas, uh, we know one of those in that mob is the editor of the Harvard Law Review. I mean, these vicious bullies are tomorrow's judges, district attorneys and, and lawmakers. Well, we must hope not. And uh, a, a number of law firms in the United States this week actually wrote to Ivy League colleges saying, you know, we're going to be keeping a very close eye on this and have no intention of recruiting people who you know, apologize for terror or support terror. And it's quite something that you know, the firms have to write to the universities from, to remind them of their obligations. I return, by the way, to the previous point. I mean, this is, this is commonplace, this sort of thing. Almost every campus in America, mm. um, uh, the major ones certainly, are filled with instances like this of Jewish students being harassed, ch chased down, um, bullied, intimidated, mocked for the murder of their co-religionists. If this happened to anyone else, we wouldn't tolerate it. If this happened, if this was a black student after a murder of of, of black Americans somewhere who was being chased mm. on campus by I don't know the the same people who who killed. Um, other people, we would we would not miss a second in condemning this. We would not miss a second in condemning this. And yet, this has become normal on U.S. campuses and across uh, much of the so-called civilized world. It it amazes me, Rita, that only the Jews, when the Jews are massacred, are then taunted, are then told that they have to be 
um, mindful of those who would kill them. Uh, we have to respect the feelings of those who would kill them and who call for their death. And, and, and then just lone Jews in places like this are able to be bullied and taunted and shame cried at them. No, the shame is on Hamas for breaking what ceasefire existed. Uh, shame is on Hamas for beheading uh, small children. Shame is on Hamas for burning families alive. And they dare to do this. They dare to chase down Jews and chant shame at individual Jews. I hope that the identities of all these people come out and the world can make judgments about them.